Alrighty, everybody, we're gonna start where, right where we left off, and, um, while this turn is loading, I'm actually gonna plug in my laptop, because it's not, it's, like, not laggy at all when it's plugged in, but it's kinda laggy when it's plugged in, so, I don't know why I didn't plug it in before I started recording, but, yeah, while the turn is loading, I'll just do this. It stinks I can't zoom out more than this. Oh, yeah, I think I can, I think I just did, I don't know. Um, but anyways, welcome to episode three. Three, I believe it's episode three, or is it episode four? I don't know. Welcome to the next episode. Just look at the title; you see what episode it is of my uh, Civ Five AI only Europe and North Africa race for the Americas, or just race for the Americas at short, as or for short. <laughs> can't talk today. Um, so for some reason, brought me over here. So England knows about this place, and Portugal knows about this place. So I'm assuming we'll see some settlers from them soon. So you have Cahokia and Quebec City. They don't have any military units. That's kind of weird. All they have is just a worker. And so those are the two city-states here. So far, no cities by uh, foreign nations have been settled. Or I guess by European and North African nations. So, Cardiff has been founded here. I don't know if I if I seen this if I saw this in the last episode. Um, so yeah, Cardiff Cardiff was settled there, and I believe London is tied with like two, or no, they grew up to fourteen. So now they're just tied with Constantinople as the largest city in the world. Unless these are bigger, I would. I imagine they aren't. Cahokia is 12, but Quebec City is only 7. Oh, Austria is the ally of Belgrade. They might be able to, diplomatic, to do diplomatic marriage and take it over. One time in another career mode, uh, one of their cities, it was Graz, but it was up here. It got taken over by Poland, and they were raising it. Then Bel they were allied to Belgrade, so Belgrade took over that city. Uh, grads, so it was so they stopped the raising of the city. Then Austria right away did diplomatic marriage and not only got their city back but also Belgrade. So that was really smart by them. And their allies with Jerusalem and Bismarck's in the industrial era, so they might, if they choose to, they might get two uh, city states. Um, this Jerusalem's in a decent area, but it might cause some border tension with uh, Egypt and the Ottomans. Like they're not directly touching borders, but it might cause some tension. Saint Petersburg, they might make it out of this alive, Russia. I can't see Moscow dropping, but I think it's possible that Saint Petersburg might fall. But they have 55 city defense. Novgorod could easily fall to them. I just don't know if Russia's really going to lose a city in this. So, yeah, Tangrism is doing pretty well around here. It's not spread, and there's no religious followers in the city. How? <laughs> Alright, um... There's not none here either. It's very, like, non-religious part of the world. Or, or, Byzantium's not doing very well to spread their religion. This part is pretty religious. Um, but otherwise, most of this area is, like, there's just a, minor a very small minority of Eastern Orthodox Christians. So Isabella is in the industrial era. Byzantium has replaced Austria's ally of Bucharest. Greece is no longer the ally of Geneva, and they were, and they weren't. I don't know how, how why that happens. Geneva and Germany now allies. It looks like a civ will be allies with a city state in a turn. Then later in that turn, they will not be allies with them anymore. Like, why and how does that happen? <laughs> Yerevan and the Huns are now allies, so Yerevan has declared war on Catherine. That's not going to really mean much. They do have a decent army, though. I mean, if the Ottomans were to, or uh, if someone were to exp 
band back here more, and then someone allied with Yerevan declared war on them, that they could cause some damage. So it's most likely the Ottomans that could expand back here. Then someone declares war on them, who's allied with Yerevan, maybe the Huns. Yerevan could cause a big impact, maybe even bigger, a bigger impact than the Huns could cause. So yeah, uh, Maria has completed Ufizi. I probably completely messed up my attempt at pronouncing that. But, um, anyways, Augustus Caesar has entered the Industrial Era. These people are pretty far ahead, or everybody's really far ahead in technology, to be honest. And there goes St. Petersburg, and they're setting it ablaze. They are burning down St. Petersburg. So they have no mercy. They're just going to burn it down. Byzantium is influential over someone. Why are they down here? Oh, it's not really in order. They're influential over me. How do I even have culture? How do I even have culture? That doesn't make any sense. How do I have culture? I need an explanation. Okay, they're influential for me because I have culture that they can surpass with tourism, but... I don't know how I have culture. I mean, do you get culture from like a settler and a nuclear submarine? I don't think so. That's really all I have. Dido's enter the industrial era. Boudicca's enter the industrial era. Still no wars really within Europe. I don't think so. And wow, that's a big army. Poland. See when the wars start coming. I want to see some wars here in Europe. So Austria is in the Balkans <laughs> with these cities, or mainly this one. I guess this is part of the Balkans. Yeah. yeah this is like a modern day like Croatia about and this is like Albania alright so several people entering the industrial era so I guess Byzantium is a cultural powerhouse and they're up to 18 citizens in that city already and London's just up to 16 so that's now breaking away as the largest city in the planet this has been a very peaceful game. I'm really surprised. Morocco is sending a tr uh, troop over here, so they kn so they know that there's something out there. The Ottomans managed to get out here. France is going. Portugal is going. Anyone coming with settlers? That's the question. Why do they have a warrior here? Yeah, that's probably just been there since the beginning of the game. England has a warrior right here. It's so weird. Okay. Any settlers? Alright, well, they're gonna meet Quebec City if they haven't already. Where's this Portuguese ship? Alright. Oh, there we go. There we go. This could very well be the end of the Netherlands. I would not be surprised if it is because France's army is just completely overpowered. But this does leave a massive gap down here in Lyon and kind of Paris once they move up here. So, Spain could launch an attack, Portugal could launch an... Oh no, Lyon is... None of their cities are on the sea. So, Portugal cannot do much unless they manage to navigate land troops through here. Um, England doesn't have a big army. Maybe the Celts or maybe England, if they really want to do that, could come down through here. 
What? Okay, <laughs> I guess people of Nottingham live underground or something. Cause they just it's just nothing here. Napoleon's entered the industrial era. See, uh, Geneva. If they're allied with someone, could cause an impact. And Spain has declared war on Carthage, and looks like they might be taking Hippo Regius. And Attila has completed Brandenburg Gate. He takes a 110 point lead on here. So it's starting to get exciting yet again. Strange borders. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Linz has been founded. Greece is a lot less expansive than they were in another one. So Kiev and the Huns now allies, and Kiev has declared war on Catherine. And yeah, it looks like they're starting to fall back. And Poland, surely they're declaring war on Russia. They have to be. Oh, I need to use my spies. I mean, I don't know who else they'd be going after. I mean, they could be going after the Huns, but... I mean, yeah. Oh. It's gone. St. Petersburg is completely gone. So, I mean, they could be going after the Huns, but they would be going down here. So, it looks like they're going after Russia. Oh, Byzantium's now the allies. Now allied with Kiev. Alright, let me send my spies... Or no, not a diplomat. Cancel. No. Move to hideout. Okay. Let's try this again. Warsaw spy. Um. Where else could we send them? What's another civ that might be thinking of war? I'm going to send it to Byzantium. I'm going to see what they're doing. Ottomans have not been as expansive as normal. You know, I'm actually going to move him to the Ottomans because they have a massive in, uh, military. Oh, wait, no. That's not their capital. Okay. There we go. Now I have it right. Okay. So, we're doing, whoops, so we're doing, th this game is going along pretty well. Some civs have, like, no military at all. Some civs have a ginormous military. So, ideology's been adopted. England has chosen freedom, so are they in the modern era? Or do you choose in the industrial era? No, I think it's the modern era. Oh, wow, look, there's just a line of cargo ships. Are they in the modern era? No. Oh. Technologies. But these civs are ahead of them. Hold on. Your third factory. That's probably what happened. Yeah, they could have three factories here. That's probably how they got it. Okay, that makes sense now. Amsterdam is, has not been attacked yet. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're burning down this city too. Oh, they got it in the peace deal. That's why they didn't lose any citizens. And they're burning it down. Russia has a new settler. It's probably going to be called St. Petersburg again. Oh, don't settle here. Poland wants to kill you anyway. Poland is completely un...
defended. So anyone, Germany, get a clear warn them. So Attila has four wonders. Ramsey's industrial era. Who's the farthest behind in technologies? Oh no, that's me. Carthage, the Celts, and Morocco. They have some catching up to do. Jeez. The city might not fall. I, I, I don't think this is a melee unit. I don't think it is. So Sweden can pretty much keep expanding wherever they want because nobody's really near them unless they launch an ocean attack. Nobody could really cause any damage to them. Unless they, yep, St. Petersburg. Unless they really start expanding out here. But I don't think they will. I think they'll mainly stick to these few cities. Amsterdam has still not been attacked. Yep, that's what you expect. That's what I expected. Now, will they be able to actually take Moscow? This question. Suleiman is plotting against Ramses the second. I really don't think anything could come of that. Poland is plotting against William. Or against the Netherlands. That doesn't make any sense. Who are they going to attack them with? Like, this rifleman and a Gatling gun? Like, everyone is over here. Alright. So, how long are we into this recording? 17 minutes. I'll go on for 3 more minutes. Oh! That Corinth could get taken over. And, oh! They have not set it ablaze, though. That's a, that's a relief. I don't want the whole world to be set ablaze. So Carthage are down to one city. Surely they're bottom in the rankings. Yep. Yep. Ideology by Poland. They've chosen autocracy. Look at Austria's army. So Rome, if they have... If they play their cards right with these boats, they could do something. Or if they somehow manage to make a landing with land units, they could do something. Oh, yep. They are playing their cards right, but this missionary's in the way. <laughs> He's trying to spread their the Egyptian religion to them. Um, Ottomans could definitely have an impact, especially on Corinth. If they build up a navy, they could take over every city. I mean, every city's on the ocean. Poland's flying against Germany now. That's not smart at all. Look at their army. Yours is over here getting destroyed. Yeah, they're not going to take Moscow. I really don't think they will. It's possible, but not likely. They're just bringing this great artist along to, like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, they got it back! Carthage took it back. And they might keep it. If this thing dies, then they're definitely going to keep it. Casimir III has completed Big Ben. Riga has a new ally. Suleiman is plotting against William. It's not going to really do anything. So this map is looking pretty good. Roman settler R right here. It's a good spot. Aretium has been founded in an unlikely place. So if they make a city here, they'll control a lot more land than they do nowadays in real life. So they have the... Oh, they settled Neapolis where Venice would be. 
this is like a really good place to have the resources. I don't know when they did that. I have seven populations, so almost happened quite a bit ago. Elizabeth has completed Porcelain Tower. Okay. Um, Suleiman's flying as Theodora. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. They're, they want to attack the cultural powerhouse. That's Byzantium. Actually, they're not extremely a cultural powerhouse. They're just influential over me. <laughs> Rome has adopted order, so it looks like freedom is not going to be most popular unless everybody else chooses it. Because freedom was first, then autocracy, now order. So all three ideologies have been founded by different sieves. William has made peace with Napoleon. What's wrong with you? Napoleon, what did you... You could have caused so much damage. But you didn't. Uh, the the uh, Morocco is in the industrial era. Any settlers? Spanish privateer, they've discovered it. Morocco's discovered it. England's discovered it. Portugal has. Their ship is gone, though. France is about to, if they haven't already. Sweden has. Oh, there it is. The Celts are about to. Come on, some people bring some settlers over here. It's deity. It should still be deity. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rome's bringing up s over so many ships, but frigates are ranged. It's not smart. Frigates are ranged, aren't they? So many frigates. All right, um, ideology chosen. Portugal has chosen freedom. All right, so that's going to be it for today's episode. I'll see you all next time. Keep on crashing the waves. Bye-bye. If you still have predictions for the winner, let me know in the comments below. See you next time.